America. The political opposition to Prime Minister Boris Johnson's move to suspend Parliament is crystallizing. Protests have formed around Britain and a petition to block the move move block the move, rather, gaining more than one million signatures. AP correspondent Zaria Shackley has more. Johnson's maneuver gives his political opponents even less time to prevent a chaotic no-deal Brexit before the October 31st withdrawal deadline. But the decision outraged critics and is serving as a unifying force for the disparate opposition. House of Commons leader Jacob Rees-Mogg has dismissed the outrage as phony. He insisted in an interview with the BBC that Johnson wants to outline his domestic agenda. The move has prompted ruptures across the political spectrum, including among members of Johnson's Conservative Party. Zaria Shackley, London. U.S. President Donald Trump urging the state of Florida residents to get ready on Thursday. This as Hurricane Dorian is expected to strengthen into a major storm in the coming days as it approaches the northern Bahamas and the U.S. mainland. National Hurricane Center specialist Jack Bevan tells the AP Dorian could wind up hitting anywhere from the Florida Keys to southern Georgia when it makes landfall. That includes all the Florida Peninsula, a good part of the eastern Florida Panhandle and parts of southeastern Georgia as well. So anybody in those areas should be monitoring the progress of Dorian and getting their personal hurricane preparation plan ready to go. The storm caused limited damage to Puerto Rico. Florida's governor has already declared a state of emergency. China deployed a fresh contingent of troops into its military base in Hong Kong Thursday. This amid the territory's worst political crisis since returning to Chinese rule in 1997. Read the full story on VOANews.com. This is VOA News. Both the United States and Iran denied Wednesday that they were looking to ratchet up tensions with each other. Defense Secretary Mark Esper said at the Pentagon, the United States is not seeking conflict. I'm I'm not sure I'm ready to call the crisis over yet, but uh, so far so good. And uh, we hope that trend lines continue that way. And we hope that all the parties, that the Iranians would agree to talk, meet and talk and help us resolve these issues. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif also said during a visit to Japan that his country is not seeking to intensify disagreements with Washington. This week, President Trump said there's a really good chance he would meet with Iranian President Hassan Rouhani to negotiate a new agreement to limit Iran's nuclear program. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro said he is accepting the help of four Chilean aircraft in the fight against wildfires in the Amazon rainforest. He's also renewing his criticism of French President Emmanuel Macron. Bolsonaro again accused the French leader of calling him a liar over a dispute over how to contain the raging wildfires. Meanwhile, Brazil's president, rather, Brazil's foreign minister, Ernesto Arojo, said on Wednesday that the Brazilian public supported Bolsonaro in his ongoing spat with Macron. Reuters' Jason Albano reports. Brazil's foreign minister said Wednesday he believes Brazilians support leader Jair Bolsonaro in his war of words with France's leader. It began over fires in the Amazon, but has devolved into a public spat. Unfortunately, President Macron offended President Bolsonaro and there were lies. And unfortunately, this offended the people of Brazil. I believe a great part of the Brazilian people think that Bolsonaro reacted in the way he needed to react. French President Emmanuel Macron has been vocal over Bolsonaro's response to fires in the Amazon. And in a tweet, Macron called for an emergency meeting over the issue at the G7 summit in France. In the days after, Bolsonaro mocked the French president's wife in a Facebook post. And Macron responded, saying that Brazilian women would be embarrassed of their president. That was Reuters' Jason Albano. Bolsonaro turned down $20 million in emergency aid from the G7, saying nothing would be done on the Amazon until Macron issued an apology. However, he later said Brazil would consider accepting the aid if it could decide how it is spent. The race to pick which Democratic candidate will face President Donald Trump in next year's election is getting a little more clear. What once was a contest that seemingly added entrance every day is starting to narrow from a field that at one point featured 20 people. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand announced Wednesday she was dropping out of the race amid low poll numbers. More on VOANews.com. I'm Liz Pelka, VOA News.